These are Nandinas we've grown here at Highland Hill Farm, and they're grown in pots. But look at the really beautiful berry clusters that they have on them. And the foliage turns red in the fall. It's green in the summer, red in the fall. Also, it grows to five to eight foot high, and it's deer resistant. And it can grow in partial to full sun. So if you want some Nandina, you want to come to Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville. We have them both potted and bald and burlap from field-grown stock. And that is a huge cluster of berries on the Nandina. A striking plant for your landscape. This video is brought to you by Highland Hill Farm. We grow and sell screening and buffering trees for privacy and sound barriers. Hi, I'm Marge and you're at Highland Hill Farm. Today I'm standing beside a tulip poplar tree. This is a Native American tree, fast growing, considered one of the tallest trees in the forest canopy. This tree will grow in excess of 100 feet. It's a good grower, it's a fast grower, and it has a strong trunk system. That it, many times fast growing trees are a weak tree, and this is not. You'll not have problems with this tree in your yard. Good grower, tolerant. In the springtime, the tulip poplar gets a flower on it that looks a lot like a red tulip. Way at the top of the tree, very striking, outstanding flower, and it's used by the bees. Honey producers are thrilled to see groves of poplar trees. The bees will make a dark honey that is preferred by people who bake. Bakers love the honey from the tulip poplar tree. So if you're looking for a tree that will give you shade, canopy, and be a good tree for the environment, think Tulip Poplar. Those trees are doomed. Are they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those arborvitaes are doomed. The other day I saw these arborvitaes that were just recently planted and made the comment that those arborvitaes are going to all die, every single one. And it's hard to imagine a nicely planted arborvita, properly planted at the correct time of the year, at a good quality location, would would die to them to the arborvitae they will all die and it was hard to understand until you think of it in terms of god not that everything born dies but those trees were over mulched god did not invent the mulch truck in a forest there's probably no more than one inch of debris on top of the forest floor from the trees each year and that debris rots in a cycle. So there's usually no more than one inch of mulch. That's what you should mirror when you're planting your trees. These arborvitaes were mulched with probably six to eight inches of mulch up over the stems of the trees. All those stems will rot where the mulch is covering the tree. Not only that, the mulch competes with the root zone of the arborvita for oxygen. The mulch is going to decay over a period of time, and the microorganisms that decay the mulch will be competing for oxygen. So as you go down deeper and deeper and deeper into the, to the, the root zone, there's going to be less and less oxygen. So the tree will starve for air. Not only that, this mulch 
harbors bacteria that can affect the trunk and girdle the tree itself. And over a period of time, this tree will decline and then die. The obvious solution is just to pull the mulch away from the tree and have no more than one inch of mulch on the tree. So if you're planting your arborvitus, make sure that your arborvitus are planted a little bit out of the ground, maybe a couple inches or two inches out of the ground so they're not too deep, and use no more than one inch of mulch at any time on top of the tree. And if you have any questions or if you're planting a lot of them, you may want to see our video on our drip irrigation line and how to set it up for your arborvitus. But if you have questions and need help with your arborvitus, give us a call at 215-651-8329. Thank you.